What's up everybody, George T from The Wagon here. This week, we're gonna be installing an MP disc brake kit onto a 61 split window bus. This is a 61 bus, so it has the early style spindles, 55 to 63. So here's everything that comes in the kit. We have new rotors, new calipers, new dual circuit master cylinder. This one is set up for full wheel disc brakes because we're doing the rears as well. We have new pads, new reservoir, new wheel seals. They supply studs. We have our caliper brackets left and right, our mounting hardware for the caliper brackets, our mounting hardware for the calipers, new longer brake lines. We have our front dust caps. This is hardware that holds the pads in place on the calipers. We have inner and outer front bearings. It comes with new spindle, the seal, the spacer for the inside, new lock plates, I'm sorry, and new thrust washers, and new hardware for the spindles. This Mylar tool here is for installing those once we get everything put onto the vehicle. For starting this install, we're gonna remove the front brakes completely all the way down to the spindle, and we're also gonna be removing this master cylinder. At this point, we have removed everything from the front and we've cleaned the spindle off. We're gonna do a little bit of detail cleaning. We're gonna test fit the bearings on here. If we need to emery cloth anything, we'll take care of it at that point there. Our next thing that actually, actually is going to happen on the spindles here will be bolting on the caliper bracket. Make sure you get some Loctite on that and the instructions hopefully have some torque specs for us. Right now, let's go over to the bench and start installing braces and packing bearings. We've got the rotors in the bench here. These are the front rotors that are bearings. Your bearing will come separate, race and bearing. The rotor itself, you can see that one there, the difference in it, how much cosoline is on that. And this one here has been cleaned. All I did, get a rag. This sharpshooter has WD-40 in it. I get my rag with WD-40 on it and the cosoline will just wipe right off of it. You're gonna follow up when you're done with this with some dish soap in a spray bottle to get all the big stuff off of it before you actually put your pads onto them. We've got to put the races inside of these rotors. So here's your races, separated from the bearing. I make sure I'm keeping that bearing with this race and I'm just finding out which one of these, that one right there, we're gonna use to put it in. These are the rears. And right now we're just putting the races in. Once you get it lined up, Make sure it's straight before you try and do this. Don't try to punch it in all crooked. You hear that sound difference? I've talked about in other videos. You can tell when something is bedded down all the way because the sound changes. I'm happy with that. I look down to just physically verify that that race is Bedded, which looks really good. Once again, keep them separated, start it. Bed it down all the way. All right, you're gonna repeat that process onto the other rotor as well. All 
Okay, so we put the races into it. And before we get these all loaded up with grease, this is our inner bearing and that's the outer. You wanna see how they fit onto that spindle, whether they're gonna need a little bit of work or not. That seems to go right on, no problem. Slides on with ease, pull it off, we check the outer. Okay, that goes right on and off. So if it didn't go right on and off, you'd be taking some emery cloth to these two points right here, a fine grit, don't get crazy with it, and just polish that up, because there might be a burr or something on it from previous use. So now we can proceed with packing these. This is a bearing packer. It's got that groove in the back. It's designed to go into a vise. So you're actually using the vise to compress the bearing and get it packed in there. So you put your bearing in, face down. I mean, the tapered side is facing downward. Put your cap on it. Line that up in the back. All right. And now you start bringing it into it. So this is a Matco version. It was only 20 bucks back in the day when I bought it from Matco, and I know there's a Harbor Freight version available as well. So you can see inside it, and there's like snakes of grease coming out of all the pockets. And once I see a good amount of it coming out, every bit of this grease that's left in this pocket, I'm gonna put onto the bearing. They're all off of there. We're gonna make sure it's, it's covering the exterior of it. I take that little dollop we got there, and I'm putting it onto the race inside the hole to make sure that this is laying in a layer of grease. So we're bringing that guy in there. We'll get it cleaned up a little bit better. But all this grease that's on my gloves, I'm gonna try and get into the center of the rotor. So now I would put our seal on there, and then this I would put on the inside there. So basically just wipe that all just into the interior of that dude. So now we've got our seal, it goes into the back. The same tool we used for driving the race is a seal installer as well if you flip it over. So I've installed that seal flush to the back over here. I'm not gonna drive it in anymore. There's no lip for it that it indexes on. So if I get it flush to the back, I'm comfortable with that. So now we have our outer bearing and we're gonna do the same thing to this. Tapered side down. So as I put it in there, we put our cap onto it. Same thing, I'm watching in here to make sure that it's pressing through the bearing, not through the side. My snake's coming out right now. I get a fair amount of it. See that right there? That nice little pile of grease coming out of the top of it. Once again, slather the bearing in it. Take my excess get it in that hole. And we are going to take an additional scoop. So I got a nice little finger full there. And I'm making sure that I'm putting the bearing in the hub. Now that bearing is on there. We've already dry fit the bearings. Now they're packed. Seal is installed. This will push right on once we get it over to the car. We're gonna do the same thing to the other side. In that time lapse there, you saw Ocean cleaning this back in here. It has to be nice clean metal for the caliper bracket to go up against. You can see this is a nice beautiful machine surface. This is a factory machine surface and that's how this is going to go on there. They supply four of these bolts specifically for it and we are applying red Loctite to each one and they'll be torqued to 54 foot pounds. <laughs> So we've got our caliper bracket torqued in place, 54 foot pounds with red Loctite on all four of these. The next step is we got to start putting the rotor onto it. 
So MP provides a new spacer for the spindle. The chamfered edge facing in, it goes along with that curved edge on the inside. So this slips over first. And this is what your interior wheel bearing seal is going to ride on. I also apply a little bit of grease to my spindle. I don't get crazy with it, but I do put some on here to make sure that there's a little bit in there. I know that when we pack the bearings, I put an extra dollop inside the rotor. I have my bearings already installed and I'm holding that front one in. Start putting that guy on. That's a matter of being patient when you're putting that on. I can feel the resistance if that bearing is just slightly tilted it's a little difficult to go on so you just got to rock it a little bit it's going to find its spot and just slip over really smooth next part is the thrust washer MP provides a new thrust washer in your kit put that on now remember your spindle hardware is left hand thread and right hand thread MP luckily labels there so the left hand thread has an L on it the right has no markings at all on it that was actually really nice I'm going to do that so this is actually right hand thread so these are, because this is an early spindle, this is a 32 millimeter. So with this first bolt you're putting on is what you're setting your bearing tension with. So what I do is I normally snug it up, and I back it off just a little bit. I take a flat blade screwdriver. What you wanna do is you wanna be able to move this and see that thrust bearing move. I don't know if the camera's picking that up, but you can see it goes side to side like that. You wanna be able to move that, but it needs to have some resistance when you move it. If you cram this sucker down and that thrust washer cannot move side to side, you've got it too tight and you're gonna prematurely wear your bearings. Just check and see, you put a flat blade in there and you can move it side to side with some resistance. I can't move it easily. I'm just not jamming the screwdriver and it moves. I gotta put a little bit of effort onto it. I'm happy with where I have my tension set there. So now we're putting the lock plate onto this. This lock plate, I use my little nip X, you gotta bend that tab up. It's kind of ridiculous how far that thing sticks out on it. Right, I'm gonna get a socket that fits over it and give it a little tap on. Simple as that. You can make sure that dude's on there the whole way. So you're looking at this lock tab right here and it needs to be compressed in. If that's sitting out like that, how is it going to thread over it? So for something simple like that, I'm just gonna take the Nipex, squeeze it on there. But I wanna see what I'm addressing. Also, there's a little bit of a bend out on that side. Once I get that comfortable where I like it, I'll hit that with the socket again and get that back in place. So I'm gonna take the Nipex, I'm just gonna put it inside there. There we go. All right, this dude on. Start threading that one on. Okay, so it's behind the washer on this side. And we're gonna bring this one up to that lock tab without moving that back bolt. That's the important part here because we've already set the tension on the thrust bearing and we don't want to change it. So right now we just snug it up. That feels good and snug. I have not moved that back bolt, the two on there. I'm gonna verify that my thrust washer still moves. It does not. So we will take this and back that up a little bit. Back that up just a touch. Snug this back up to it. There I go. And I see that thrust washer moving again. I know that we're good. Just gonna verify that this is nice and snug. So you want one to fold over this one and one to fold over the back one. So I just give it a start with the nip X in the direction I wanna go. I'm gonna take that to the front and to the back. So I finish it off with just tapping that onto there. My screwdrivers, it's actually designed for impact couple of taps to lean it forward. And we're on that dude. Just give it a good squeeze and just make sure I'm nice and tight up against that. All right, I wanna make a note about something. We are running 15 inch crow's feet on this one, original 15 inch wheels, so we can just put stock lugs back in it. If you're running an aftermarket wheel, MP does provide the studs to go in here to where you'd actually have the studs for your aftermarket wheel to go on. I've been forewarned that these dust caps fit poorly, so I know that that might be a little bit of a struggle. Since this is super cold, it's a little chilly right now, I will most likely be heating up the dust cap with a heat gun 
and then seeing if it helps out with a little bit of an interference fit. We're ready to go. We're ready to start hanging some calipers on this guy. And we are gonna give this, before we put a caliper on it, we're gonna give this a thorough washing with some Dawn dishwashing soap and a rag, and then finish it off with some brake cleaner. Two dust caps come in your kit. And if you're an experienced VW tech, you know which one is which, but if you're not, the one with the square is for your speedometer side, so driver side in America. This would be your driver side, this is your passenger side. We're working on a passenger side, so this is where this is gonna go. on that time lapse I take a round file and I'm just working that inside lip like that to just get that little bit of edge off of it and heating it up unfortunately it did take a little bit of a dent right there but it's nothing that interferes with anything when she spins earlier you saw when we cleaned it we cleaned it with WD-40 so this is just soap water Dawn dishwashing soap and water and I give it a, a liberal coating of it Get a little bit on my paper towel there. And we start taking all that grease off of this. And then I'm, my hand is like a caliper right now. I'm on both sides of that rotor, spinning it and getting it good and clean. This isn't that dirty, so we may not even have to follow it up with brake cleaner. But if you were doing something like an older part, you would definitely follow it up with some brake clean. You can feel it's grease free now and ready to start accepting the pads onto it. We are going to install the calipers now. They provide the hardware for it. These bolts will be torqued to 58 foot-pounds. We're gonna apply some Loctite to them as well. When this is installed, bleeder facing up. Make sure you're paying attention to that. So those bolts have been Loctited on. Calipers are now set in place. Next thing we're gonna do is put the soft line on that goes from body to caliper. Okay, on the brake line that MP supplies you with, they also supply a copper sealing washer on it. So do not forget that. That's gonna be pretty vital. Let's pull your little plug out there. Always connect to the caliper first. You mount here first because the fitting on the body spins. This, once you get it in place, will not need to turn anymore. Okay, so we gotta still tighten at the body, but we got this side nice and tight. It says next to put the pads in, but I also see that they got little protective dust caps that go on those and they supply you with a tool for putting it on. So we know that's torqued. We know those are on there. It's very reminiscent of the CSP kit, if anybody's ever used that. This caliper looks identical. I know the CSP kit has these dust covers that go on that. They come with these adhesive sticky back pads that go onto the brake pads. So peel that off. You see, I already have that one installed. You're gonna be very particular about where you're lining up the holes before you actually stick it down. All right, I can see both of my holes in there. I got a nice clearance around that. I'm assuming these are like an anti-squeak. They supply them there. So there's four of these in the kit. This is the brake pad hardware pin kit that it comes with. They come with a pin on each, the cotter pin that holds it in place, 
and these are like the tensioners that are going to go on and they make note in the instructions that the long side goes towards the rotor so after we've connected to the caliper we basically put it into the body and this 11 millimeter screws on here and you got a 17 and it holds it down here once you get that sucker in place you have the lock tab make sure you put that back in there it's very important it holds that line secure now that line can't go anywhere and we'll get that thing snugged up real quick so the brake pads drop in from the top this one was a little tight getting in there i noticed that the mounting hardware has the silicone boots on it so i'm assuming that this caliper can come over to get a little bit of slack on that all right these clips are a little tricky right here they actually clip onto the brake pad itself but you can see that that down there is going to keep the tension when that pin goes in but they actually clip onto the actual brake pads so they supply you with the pins that are coming through push that sucker down a little bit and put it through It's the easy one because it's not under tension. And they do supply you with this small little cotter pin. And that's going to keep that pin from cotting, coming out. And this is what keeps tension on the pads. Coming in on the next one. All right. The pad is in the way. Let's see what's going on. You can see what I'm doing there. I'm moving that hole. I'm just gonna put it in as such, like that. So now all this is locked into place and it cannot move. We still have to tighten that. We got our 17 on the hose here, 11 millimeter for the actual brake line. And we're just gonna do the final snug on that. Excellent. So this is tightened. Our clip is in place. We've got our crush washer on there. Our pads are installed. Our torqued and Loctited caliper and our dust covers are on. So this corner is completed. For our particular application, we're gonna be doing four wheel disc brakes. So the rear kit that we'll be installing as well. This master cylinder has been modified for a four wheel disc brake kit. So when this gets installed, this will be our rear circuit and this will be the front circuit. So both fronts are gonna to go to this line. We have one line coming out that will go to the brakes and one of them will be our brake light switch. They also provided us with a new reservoir that will then be put on top of this. Part number on this is an AC Industries 211-611-011-QSP. So this is dual circuit modified for forward disc brakes. So the reservoir just presses directly on top of the master cylinder 
So I put a little bit of brake fluid on each one of these because brake fluid is an excellent lubricant. And you can usually just press the two together. So you see it goes in and just make sure it beds all the way down. So now that reservoir is now attached to that master cylinder. And you want to make sure you have your cap towards the front of the bus because this will line up with the hole in the floor for filling. On the driver's side frame rail, you're going to have both brake lines going back this way. One's for your rear circuit and one is going to be for the driver's side brake. Make sure you identify which is which. In our situation here, the newer darker line is our front brake. So make sure you identify those as you're going to put in your new master cylinder. Also with your brake lines, this is your clutch cable. You don't want this touching a brake line. The back and forth motion will eventually saw through your metal line. So what we may have to do at this point is disconnect the, the front clevis and get the clutch cable out of the way. We will bend this line closer to the frame to where it hugs it very similar to the way this, this front brake line is and then bring it up here to master cylinder on the side. So you do have to do some brake line bending when you go to upgrade to a dual, dual circuit. But if you're careful and you back things as you're bending it, I mean like put your hand behind it as you're bending it, you shouldn't kink it. It should still work out nice and smooth. A little tech tip here. When you're installing your master cylinder, do not hard mount it until you have the lines close to where they want to be. And if possible, thread it into the master cylinder. And then you'll use the master cylinder to kind of get them in position for their final install. Don't tighten any of the lines on it until you have all three connected to it. It's, it's beneficial for you to have them a little bit loose so you can manipulate if needed. So we've got all three brake lines are now connected to the master cylinder. None of them are tight yet. We did change out the hardware and we're using 10.9 M8 by 125s in the length of 30 millimeter. We have a new switch we're gonna be putting in there so we will not be transferring the old switch out of it. And on this application, we're using a two prong switch. Master cylinder now installed, new hardware, new two prong brake light switch. These are the old existing lines. Now you look here, my clutch cable is going to be coming straight onto that and we need to verify that we have space over here. So worst case scenario when I reconnect that clutch, I may have to do a little bit of bending on those lines up there just to make sure that we're not sawing through those. While we're in here, I replace the brake spring pedal. I put hardware back on it because this was missing the little circlip on the end there. I put a cotter pin and a washer on her pedal. This has been adjusted with the proper one millimeter spacing. Here is the result of that clutch cable. We got a new clevis on it, a new cable, new clevis pin, new hardware that came in the same kit with the Wolfsburg West clutch or brake pedal kit. We are going to start filling this system up. We're going to hook up our Motiv pressure bleeder on it. And the first thing I do when I hook that up is I bleed out the master cylinder. That's the only part that's going to make a mess. And I put a catch can underneath it to keep that in check as well. But once we get the master bled out, I start moving to the furthest caliper, passenger rear, driver's rear, passenger side front, and end it on driver's front caliper. And I usually do about two to three cycles until I have zero bubbles coming out anywhere because all these lines are gonna be brand new. There's gonna be plenty of air in the system. But usually about two to three rounds and they're all done. That floor is definitely a patchwork quilt. And you can see that hole right there with that super jagged, sharp, rusty metal. That's a, that's a hoot nanny right there. We all know how much those cut you already when you're taking those master cylinder caps off. So this should be blast. My goodness, that was tight. Razor sharp rust all around your hand. Absolutely terrifying. I leave the screen in there for the motif. Put our 
our adapter on. All right. I keep the motif in this tray. If we have any issues with it leaking or anything, it leaks into the tray, not into someone's car. about seven pounds first and then we can see if any leak shows up pumping fluid into the system now and we just give it a quick check make sure we do not see anything leaking I'm not seeing any leaks right away I'm gonna go give it a little more pressure so you can see what I'm talking about when I'm talking about pressure it tells me how many pounds I'm putting in it all right so now we're about eight pounds this will definitely start showing you if you got a leak somewhere so far so good so on the MP kits we're using our rear bleeders are eight millimeters. Front bleeders are gonna be nine millimeters. I know that I have an eight millimeter in the rear on these empties. I put the open end wrench on it, and then I'm gonna put my actual catch can onto it. When I put the open end wrench on it, I make sure that it's in the direction where I'm gonna be loosening that way and I have plenty of room to do so. Put the wire on the catch can there because I wanna be able to first off see it filling up with fluid. So a lot of times what I'll do is I'll turn this upward. You'll literally see the fluid and the bubbles coming out. So we're gonna give this one its first crack open. you can see it coming out of that hose you can see like the air bubbles coming out and then fluid air bubbles and fluid that's why i said we give it a couple of rounds One of the really good things about working on a bus is you have access to your brake pedal right here. So I can actually check what my pedal feels like without bringing the car back down. We have a beautiful pedal right now. I think I'm still gonna go do one more session of bleeding throughout just to verify that we have what we want. I'm happy with the results we're getting. We got the brakes bled out. We're gonna torque these wheels down and it's actually gonna go on its first couple test drives. Word of warning when you are running new brakes you need to season your pads. So just don't go out there and start slamming on your brakes. You need regular driving for about 35 miles and then you can get on your brakes a little more aggressively. So we were filming that right before buses, literally the day before we all left for buses. And unfortunately we had an out-of-stater breakdown from Utah, a gentleman named Zach, and we helped get him and his family back on the road. So unfortunately, we didn't get to do any driving footage. I'm gonna put some video footage in here of Emmy driving at two buses by the bridge. The brakes work great. Way better pedal, way better stopping than she had before with the drum brakes, and she was very happy with the install. We also did, as you saw, some clutch fixes. I actually had to weld her Bowden tube back onto the bus just to get it dialed in for that trip. But I appreciate you guys watching. I hope these videos help you. I got about three videos out there with rear disc brake installation, so go look for those. I really wanted to focus on the front brake, and especially this kit, because this is for early spindles. If you look into people that make uh, bus front brake kits, there's not too many bolt-on early spindle kits. So that's the real bonus of this kit that I know CSP makes the similar kit, and that particular kit we used there was the MP kit. This video is not sponsored by MP. Nobody pays me to put their product on, this, on their vehicles. Uh, this is something that I wanted to show you guys because I think it's a good solid kit. It works well. It's affordable compared to a lot of other front brake kits out there, and you get the advantage of the disc brakes and eliminate those drum brakes. Thanks for watching, guys. Hit that like, hit that subscribe button, and hope to see you next week for another video.